final day, final rounds of the 2020 BMW IBSF Bobsay and Skeleton World Championships. We're in Altenburg in Saxony, close to the Czech border, and here at one of the toughest tracks on the planet, we will see our four-man World Championships decided after two weeks of insanely exciting racing. John Morgan, this looks like it might be just a cardiac arrest finish. It's unbelievable. Here's Lochner. He tied for the World Championships two years ago to the 100th of a second with Francesco Friedrich. Second best starts of the top three sleds. Little mistake on the way down, and he's 100th behind the two leaders. 100th, because the two leaders, Friedrich, he tied two years ago for the World Championships. He tied for the two-man gold medal, made the mistake there at the Olympics two years ago. And here, into the 14th, he's about to win his third straight four-man title. If he doesn't make any mistakes, he won the two-man. Going away is sixth straight two-man event. Nico Walter, he had a almost a career-ending crash in November. And this local athlete from nearby Dresden doesn't get the best starts, but he definitely is the best driver. Deficient starts, he's had the lead two of the three heats. Martin, three sleds separated by a hundredth of a second. It can't get any closer. I, it, it can, but it's just almost inconceivable we could have a three-way tie for gold, but really nobody deserves out of the top three not to win this. Oscar Kieberman has slipped out of overnight contention with a loose third heat. Benny Meyer in fifth, ahead of Dominic Dvorak. And our 20 sleds that go into the fourth and final heat will be headed up by Japan's Ryo Shinohara, one of our World Cup rookies, uh, World Championship rookies as well in the field. Hunter Justin Church. Cripps pulled out overnight. Hunter Church crashed. We hear the Hunter and Josh Williamson have been taken to a local hospital for observation, but the doctors say they are okay. It's just a precautionary checkup. And that man, Francesco Friedrich has not had a clean run. Nobody has had clean runs down this track, even in the slightly slower, frostier conditions today. There were mistakes. And if any one of our three lead Germans does have a clean run, then that could put daylight between them and their rivals. Nico Walter lost the World Championships in 2015 by 200s. Max Arndt snatched the gold away from him. That's the closest he's got. That was his first international medal. And as you said, uh, a tie for gold in Koenigsegg, the last German Worlds. Just ridiculous between Johannes Lochner, the hometown hero, and Francesco Friedrich. So uh, anything could happen. And after the skeleton team race was decided by 100th, between four sliders over a run each, and we had 500s covering the men's skeleton podium, I just I, I despair of there being ever close racing like this again. So this is where we'll go. We'll go from 20 down to one. And because Francesco Friedrich set the time and Nico Walter then tied it, because he, no, Nico Walter set the time and Francesco Friedrich then tied it. Okay, so Friedrich is going last anyway. However, let's see. No, in fact, I think we'll see what we get to at the bottom of the run. 20 sleds to decide the medals in the four-man bobsleigh world championships in Altenburg, Germany. Martin Haven and John Morgan for the final time in this world championships calling the race for you trackside. Set for Rio Shinohara and his team, their first world championships, and they are in the 20 for the final run. 36, 39, and 29 for this young Japanese team. 540, but they had a brakeman change, right? Yeah, that was overnight. Yeah, Kenji so they lost coming. 10 hundredths with the brakeman change. So safely out of the star blocks and corner four, the first key area for losing time. If you hit turn five, it throws the sled up in the air. That was not too bad. Then through this upper labyrinth, and then curve nine. The exit here. Harold Shodai, curve named after the 94 Olympic champion who's from this area. They've had Bob. just 20 minutes since the first heat ended today. So not enough time to re-prepare the track in any way other than just a quick spray it, of water. Check it out now. It's pretty glistening. Yeah, it won't be that way in about uh, when we get the final sleds. Oh, he's really high there. Big height. Bring it down to the line safely. Gets them across the line. 55-48. His fastest run of the competition. That's the way to go out. Yeah. Hey, first ever world championship for this young Japanese pilot. 
And that's the end of his first senior season, made his Look World Cup debut. Look at the crowd. Yeah. They salute every athlete that comes into the finish. Yeah. Well, Rio Shinohara and his crew, their target was to make the top 20, get four heats, get down safe. They have done all of those. Look at the way he leaps in. Yeah, he's one of the smaller drivers in the competition. Get in, get down. Now look at they're in a skid. You could see the uh, the angle of that. And then down here in 14, this is perfect lines there. If he can continue stuff like that, you know, and gets a start time, he'll be competitive. Climbs way too high. He almost inverted there in the take on to 17. <sighs> Yoshiki Kaneko there, enjoying his time. Alexander Bredikin of Russia had a good run in last year's World Championships into 12th position in Whistler. Last race here, he was eighth in the World Cup, but he is not having a similar time. Well, it's about the start time, Martin. He's got the 18th, 16th, and the 38th, the 12th best start, 520. 528, they go backwards. You know, you want to have the same within a hundredth or two of your start time, all four runs, depending on how the start track is from one day to the next. Yeah. And again, from one heat to the next, it was warm and sunny earlier on. There's less sun now. It may be that because the refrigeration's on hard to preserve the ice, the start track is actually getting sticky. Now, keep your eyes on the glistening track. That's because they just spritzed it, almost like the Zamboni coming out before a hockey game. It's not going to look like this about 10, 12 sleds from now. Yeah, when the leaders get down at the end of the hour, it's going to be very different ice, and that could really throw a cat among the pigeons. 2.26 seconds ahead of Rio Shinohara, and just creeping away now. So he will finish no worse than 19th place. Alexander Bredikin's World Championships conclude with a 54-93. Again, his fastest run, so better ice for these guys than they had at the tail end of the first heat, particularly after the crash for Hunter Church that delayed us by about 20 minutes. So these guys were on very frosty ice. Yeah, 12th last year in the Worlds. He looks like he's going to finish in 18th or 19th in this World Championships. Late on curve nine, look at the runner tips. He's not trying to steer away from the mistake. He bounced once, let it come straight. 14, catches that little nook at the end. Now he's on the wrong side. He's got to be over on the left side. Keep your eyes on that, because if you stay on the right side, you've got to cross over too much pressure at 15. That can erase a lot of time at the bottom speed part of the track. Smiling Russians head to the leader's box. At the top of the track is Lamindine of Great Britain with Oli Butterworth, Ben Simons and Tremaine Gilling, the crew. From the Parachute Regiment, Oli Butterworth and Grenadier Guardsman, driver Lamindine. Well, I'm in the veteran driver in the field at 38 years old. And like all the British crews, funding their own season. So thanks, I'm sure, on his behalf to all the sponsors who have dipped in and filled up the pot. 532 start. Ooh, big skid. He did the same thing in the second run. Then he drives around. I call squaring around curve two. You don't want to be steering unless you absolutely have to. Four to five, pretty good. Nice smooth transition. That will help keep the speed aboard the sled. Ooh, that's not good there. Ooh. Ooh. 32 hundreds. He should probably lose oh. some. Now, this is going to, first of all, the health of the athletes. Stay in the sled. Well, they'll be hanging on a long while here. Ooh, there's a face mask that just, oh, he comes back up. Unbelievable. Now, just let's hope Lamin can get a hold of the, uh, the D-rings. D-rings. He's going to go over again if he can't. He's looking. Well, they haven't quite Boy, got the speed to tip the sled, fortunately. Two, two of the last six sleds come down have crashed. Now, the brakeman should get the brakes on. No, he, 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 he'll come up. Yeah. There's no problem. Yeah. They're all, all right. up. Look, they're all cool. Lamin. Oh, so need to leap out, stop the sled on the way up the hill. 
Well, that's... Oh, there's somebody down there. They should. Yeah, well, this I... is where there's, you, you just have the adrenaline flowing. They yeah. shouldn't move until medical staff gets to him. Just a little late there, and he gets in wrong side of nine. Look, he's going to come way too high. He's going to bring it back down. Centrifugal force is going to bring him back up. He sort of fell asleep there. Yeah, just got Look, in he's, too, you know, late. He's too late. Look at him try. He Robin yeah. hooded the runners. You can see the runners, yeah. but his mistake was made a couple uh, yeah. curves above. We saw him tap on the take on. But yeah. boy, that's yeah. not the place you want to crash. Right. Now, now they're all up, which is great. But now the course, the track is dug up, and they're going to delay more. Oh, there's the face mask that yeah. goes out. Look at these pictures. Well, that, that's nearly what happened to Hunter's church slide. He almost came back up there. And that's of somebody's face mask off their uh, helmet. Yeah. So the Russians go down to help out. Everybody in bobsledding and skeleton knows what it's like to have a crash. Listen. Yeah. A little bit of cool runnings here. Yeah. Wow. A tough way to end the World Championships for Lamindine, Oli They finished. They finished yeah. on their runners. Yeah. The hard way. Yeah. Look at the crowd. Ben Simons and Tremaine getting there. Tremaine. There's Ben with his helmet on his head. Lamindine. Lamindine. <laughs> yeah. It's snowy and slippery there. They're only in their spikes. And right, they can't big win. Big Butterworth. Can't win. Be spectacular, Lamin. From the parachute regiment. Built tough. Well, they are down, and they will finish in the top 20 Track in the World Championships. Wow, two sleds in the last six. Martin, we had not had any four-man crashes in training all week. Track's been very safe, and then we've had two now in the last six sleds, seven sleds. So, so the Russians get extended time in the leader's box. And I don't forget, actually, Anne Van Nuenhaus, the Belgian driver watching at home, makes a very good point. Because there was such a delay in the heat, the guys who went off last, so Bredikin, Shinohara, Lamindine, had to get back up to the top and be ready to go again within about 25 minutes. So... There was no time for warm-up and everything else, and as a result, potentially, their start times are suffering in this final heat. Now, well, the, the, the Japanese start time for sure, because yeah. they replaced a the guy. Uh, yeah, but that was... That Bredin, was 28. That was for the first heat. But Bredin uh, was right on. He was, you know, he was 20 in the last heat, 28 there. That's a good yeah. point. But uh, I, So, you know, it's, it's only a few hundreds, but, it, it, you know, we've got three sleds covered by 100th at the end of the track. Every hundredth yeah, but, can be vital, so... Very valid point. You know, normally you'll get minimum of 40 minutes to turn around. The sled will be taken away by the crew. Then you can do your warming up. Look at the crowd here, Martin. Yeah. They're 10 deep all the way up and down the track. My first time here in 1987 for the Aero Cup. First time the Western teams were allowed across the border into this secret East German sports military facility. There was 15, 20,000 people here for those races each day. And then the 90 World Championships, the 2001 World, uh, 2001 World Championships, and then again here in 2008, and this one. And, you know, this is the track. They say it's like Darlington is the NASCAR. Too tough to tame, but Martin, the conditions are such it's warm. The athletes have control of the sleds. If this was ice cold, we would have been seeing more uh, crashes. More, yeah. You know, we saw quite a few of the first week in the women in the two man. Um, well, the names might have been, been pretty calm. Names might have been different in the Aero Cup, but I'm sure the fervent fan support was just the same. Lots Amazed more me. nations here as well. And uh, really good to see so many fans trackside. It's actually making it a little tough to move. There's Alexander Bredikin, our race leader on the left, and his team. See how warm it is? They don't even, yeah. don't even need jackets. That's how warm it is right now. Look at us. We're just, <laughs> we're just in a shirt and a, and a light top, so exactly the same for us. Now, all the fans have come out because it was forecast to rain. There's Chris Woolley laying the Swiss sled on the ice for Timo Rona. We have been given the two-minute countdown to restart the race, so we are getting to go racing again. Few spots of water in the air. I might regret not having that rain jacket when we need to go to the finish to interview our winners in an hour's time or so. But a great, great finish to this World Championships in Prosper. And John, it's been insane this week how close the racing has been. 
Und Pralesic, ja, wenn ab. Rain coming, boy, this is going to change the dynamic of the competition. First of all, keep your eyes on the track as it glistens, right? Like the refrigeration, the farthest point from the refrigeration plant to the top of the track right here. And I'm telling you, you won't see it glisten like that about 15 sleds from now. Well, we might do because it's raining here. Well, it's not raining there. It's uh, yeah. it's covered. When you're in 1990, there was no roof on top of the track. Getting our four-man world championships back underway with Timo Rona and the four-man crew. Let's see what these Swiss athletes can produce. A little track hold off the crash of Lamin Dean. Roger Lyme Gruber, Joel Fearon, the Olympic bronze medalist in 2014 for Great Britain, and Maran Juma on the back handles of the sled. Timo's first four man world championships. 40. Worst start of the four, so that's a slower start track up there. He had plenty of time. Look at the rain come yeah. in now. Here we go. Oh boy. I am going to regret not having a raincoat. Things could change. Oh, he makes a mistake between four and five. The spot where all the athletes and skeleton had some challenges. It's been such a quick turnaround between the end of the delayed first heat and the beginning of the second heat that these athletes won't have had maybe even time to look at their notes or video from the first run to correct errors. So the Romer's father, Marcel, crashed in this track in 2001 World Championships when he was one of the favorites. Watch out here. Oh, high offline and a big oh, hit on control. the wall. Well, he should still go ahead of Lamin Dean, and he does. In fact, he goes ahead of Alexander Bradikin as well. Hangs on to the uh, lead young, he had. Young, what's he, 22 years old, Swiss pilot? Yeah, Timo Rona, uh, 21, 22 years old. You were spot on. Well, his father, Marcel, looking on. Marcel's won a silver medal at the Nagano Olympics in 1998. Look at the exit of nine. Don't think he got off there where he wanted to. One hit, let it come. Don't steer away from trouble, but he's got a back end skid going, so he might have played an airborne runner tip right oh. there. That's 13 to 14. Could see more of that. Boy, Martin, he looked pretty out of control here yep. in a couple spots down this track. Right here, watch them Robin Hood this, the runners. Robin Hood is when you steer as far as you can steer. Yep. Well, Tino, threw one down. You get ice and then you spray water on it. You know how slick it gets. That's what the drizzle is doing. It's suddenly turning this into a skid pan. Mihai Centir of Romania next up. And he was in 16th position after three heats. He's nearly half a second ahead of Timo Rona. 25 the last time. 31, 600 slower for this young Romanian. How old is he? 20? Yeah. He's the youngest driver in the field, and it's starting to really rain. Now you got some visibility issues. You know, some of the drivers put that rain X on their on their visors. I'm sure they're doing it now. Yeah. Well, if you're getting to do it now, then it might be a little too late for some of them. Just here in the rain, coming down the straight, straight down the middle again. Boy, these are, this is pretty quick. This young athlete was sixth place after two, after the first team in the two man. Oh, what happened there? How did he, what happened there? Again, the rain on the ice is just making it absolutely treacherous. It, it'll be so different in field to what they had in the first heat. Three sleds in the last 10 have crashed. It is absolutely pelting with rain now. They came way up, way up. Now the sled's going back. Again, they've come to the conclusion it's safer yeah. to let the sled go back and forth. Desperately trying to stay in. You know, in, in my day, when we barely had the sleds covered, we were told to stay with the sled, get in that little cocoon there and just wait until safety. Somebody should grab it there. They aren't. It's going back down again. I would almost debate that strategy. Now the jury members were saying they've had 
track workers injured trying to stop sleds when they think it's the right time. And so they've been told here just to wait until he gets to the low point. And we can remember, you know, the narrow miss we had in Lake Placid last year yeah, when a sled yeah. crashed and then righted itself. And the track worker leapt into the track to run down to where a crash sled would normally get to, came hurtling up the wall and, yeah, just, just avoided a calamity. So there is the low point. There's the gate in the track. And again, you can see in the long yeah, shot, it is sleeting down four with rain. Get up. Yeah, they're saying, how come you didn't stop us? I'm not sure I can disagree. But again, it is Three. a... We haven't seen the driver yet. A difference of opinion. OK, so where did it all go wrong, wrong then? Oh, Rolling that, into 11. I wish they could show us the line coming out of Kreisel because he looked good. Unless he tapped the take on before he got into 12. It so just I looked think like the he Exeter was Chrysler right here, look at this. The middle. Almost came back up on its runners. Almost hit the woodwork. Yeah, and then this, this is 14. Exeter 14, and get in the sled. Just get yourself, you know, get yourself small in there. But again, if they could show us the exit of Chrysler. And for the tran fans track side, who maybe have been here for the last couple of days, then Look the, at the, the noise of a sled coming down upside down is a very different thing to the sled's normal noise. There's Mihai Tente. He's out of the sled. It's like I see all four standing. And we are in the midst of a real winter rain. storm now. Is that rain or is rain that sleet? Rain and snow. That sleet and snow hurtling down. Well, the medical crew have already attended to Hunter Church's crew crashing towards the end of the first heat today. Martin, I was talking about how good he was, sixth in the two-man competition, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden crashed. I mean, he looked perfect coming out of Kreisel. The only thing could have happened is he could have tapped the right-hand wall before 11, and then all of a sudden that centrifugal force rolled him into yeah. the curve because yeah. he did roll into the curve. But I've seen a lot of crashes in Altenburg. I've not seen one like that. No, to come into sight upside down is highly unusual. Often you'll get in late onto 11, and then 12 will just roll you right he, up, he, almost onto the roof of the... We saw nothing in... Yeah. And uh, it, he, he clearly must have had a drift going that got him somehow sideways into 11. And as soon as he hit the take on the sled, basically just tripped over but uh, it's in a little blind spot in the cameras so we don't have anything other than what we've seen well you know we talked about Bredikin and his crew just down there without any coats on and how the fans have all got coats on looks like the fans are right so let's take a look again and see if we can spot anything else. Comes out a nine. This looks perfect. I mean, well, how, how does he make a mistake? He's what skidding, happens? He's got a back end skid going. Oh, that's rolling into the curve. Yeah. I've been coming here for, since 87. I've seen a lot of crashes on the track. I've right. not seen one that type of style. We're making a mental note now, aren't we? We're going to have a remote camera in that little blind spot for next year's World Cup race. How does he roll in there? And he looks yeah. straight. I was just starting to drift away. The nose was going left, yeah, the tail we've seen, was coming we've right. We've seen people sideways going into that curve with a better result. If you're sideways with the back in the ditch, that's one thing. If you're sideways with the nose in the ditch and the back starting to climb up as, as it hits the take on, maybe that's, maybe the nose was still I on the track. Don't I don't even know. think he hit the take on. He was like, you know, a couple inches away from the sidewall. Yikes, grim weather out, folks. This can stop as soon as it likes. The weather outside is frightful. Well, it's not snowing. And then what is the mood at the top of the track? Oh. <laughs> well, there's Team Arona and his crew, Joel Fearon on the right there. <laughs> Roger Lime Kruper and uh, Muran Gilma. So our second track hold of this heat. Wow, we went 23.46, then we went uh, 66, and then we went about, we went 75, 80 sleds at four-man before we had the first crash. 
And now we've had three, two crashes in the, or three crashes in the last ten sleds. Yeah, two in the last three. Yeah. And unfortunately, this now, is going to make drivers a little nervy because they are thinking, what's this weather doing to the track? And the problem is, you don't find out until you're sort of out of corner five because most of the track until corner nine is covered. So that rolling into 11 crash, John, that's what Nico Walter did pre-season. That's the crash that put him on the back burner for and he was driving the a brand, part of the year. A brand new uh, sled that he didn't understand what happened to him. Mm. And he went back to a different sled after that. Well, Pete Gunn suggesting occasionally a bobsleigh will roll into a corner because the front gets caught in a rut from a previous crash and it just drags it offline and the back is still going forward up the hill. And that's entirely possible as well. We've had a couple of crashes from earlier on, so... Keeper Manis's children down there, friends and family. That was one of the great things last or two weekends ago now when they were presented with the medals. Something that you never get in an Olympic ceremony is that they were presented by an IOC official with their Olympic gold medals and the, then the friends and family got to come up and join them on the podium, which was just a wonderful little thoughtful touch, I thought. You know, the whole thing was so well handled and... Uh, just a nice There it is. Here's the guy coming up. Here's here the he Oscar Ma Oscar Melbardis, who uh, yeah. received both a uh, two-man bronze and a, a four-man four man from the 14. Yeah. Then he followed it up in 18 with a uh, a bronze on his own. Uh, he was only t a seven eight hundredths out of the gold that was yeah. tied for. So that was a close race too. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? He had a bad second heat. Otherwise, he would have been challenging for the gold also. And Rico Peter as well got so close, didn't he, into in fourth, to, yeah. to getting into the medals in the four, four man, man in the fourth and final. He, he had a bad draw in the first run. So. Uh, yeah, bad season leading into the games puts you behind the eight ball when it comes to the starting lineup. Ready again to get our four man world championships final heat underway. This is Oscars Melbardis of Latvia, two weeks on from being awarded his Olympic gold medal from the Sochi Games. He is back in action. First race season since Pyeongchang, a year away, trying to recover from uh, his back problems. Inters Dabas on the sled has been sliding in since like 2003. His first World Championships was 2005. Yep. And I'm sure anybody in the field would take him. He was sliding a year after our youngest two-man athlete was born. 36 years old, Intars Dambis, a real veteran of the sport. Two new boys on the sled this year. Agas Nemi at two and Agas Pirogs at four made their World Cup debut with Ralph Berchins, whose sled this is. So Melbardis is about six foot three, about 250 pounds, runs like a deer. And claims he's slow and unfit. Unfit. Yeah. He's a, well, compared to what he of injuries, wants to be. A lot of injuries. Yeah. He's had, you know, not, this is the first time we've seen him this year. Push bar. He just got it in. Moving around there on the outlet. That's not what you want. Now, he's got quite a lead. But I'm sure there's a lot of people looking at the monitors up top. Yeah. Well, now, what the rain has done, now it's stopped, is it has acted as again as a spritz on the track. Yeah, you're right. how matched the track is now. It is totally frosted up. It yeah. was glossy yeah. 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 five minutes ago. Yeah, well, we knew that was going to happen, but I thought yeah. the rain would help would, it. Yeah, I think all the rain did, basically, was turn it into a skid pan for a couple of minutes. Now it is mat-wise everywhere. So that means there's more grip for the, the runners. Yeah, he, he's perfectly straight. He's had no issues. He's one of the most experienced athletes in the field, not talking about his gold medal in 2014. 54.80. And if you look at, he came down 29, 3,900 slower than he yeah. did in his first heat. So the track's not fast. Whether or not, you know, we, we don't have a real measuring yeah. stick to Hard know. To judge, because only four sleds have made it down. Yeah. So. And it's changed in the last, when did we start? Well, actually, half an hour okay. ago, we've only got four sleds to the finish line. This could be a long final run. 
the start. Watch the cohesion. Second guy's waiting for everybody to come in. Now the arms come up. Supposed to come up together. They still aren't in yet. The third guy couldn't get settled. They couldn't get that push bar in. That wasn't a perfect start. But this this is like an all-star team, too. Yeah. This wasn't. They've been sliding all summer or all winter together. There's the so takes over the lead from Timo Rona's crew. Oscar Smelbardis moves into the leader's box, but we still have 14 sleds to come. But he is back in action. Next up, Roman Heinrich of France. Really disappointing third heat. Only 15th fastest. It dropped him out of the top 10 and down to 14th place. Now, he ideally needs a top 12. So this has got to be the one that counts. Yeah, the 12, the 22, 22, and a 25, 30. Oh, he's in a skid, 24. Pretty good start, speed, second best speed, even though they had the best numbers, but that was that little skid. You saw him come out and angle towards the left wall. The track is frosting so much, you can almost only see one set of runner marks. That's from the sled that we're watching. Look, there are no marks on the ice that glisten. Yeah, the first couple of sleds down, we talked about. Look how glistering, Whoa. shiny the track is. And I see how Get quickly heat. the back comes Fifth back best to speed. it. And he's only just level with Oscar Smelbardis. 10 hundredths lead between the two of them. When he sat down on the sled, now it's 12 hundredths back. He's going to fall one more spot. Yeah. At least, maybe more. Well, Timo Rona is no, way 1. back. 8 Shit. seconds no behind way. Mel Bardis, so he will drop a spot. Disappointing second day for our... Oh. Second at the line, 10th to 15th in the World Championships. That second, is a disastrous day, too, for He's Robin had a great Ivan. season. He's but had look, a great he season. buries his head. It wasn't quite what he needed in any way. You know, last year's World Championships, he didn't compete. Didn't get, did not get a top 10 finish this year in the four man, and this was looking like being the first he got one. 10th in Koenigsee. Look at the skid. Yep. And the guy's still up in the air, and he, he might hit. He hits with his hand. Never see that. You never see somebody hitting their hand. Does that cost you time? Of course it does. Yeah. Cost you a couple hundreds there, and that's six at the bottom, but he had worse mistakes coming down the track. Not a good second day. No. Disappointing end to the World Championships for Roman Heinrich of France. He had a break for change, too. Yeah. Jeremy Bouterin getting in right at the last minute there. Next up, Patrick Baumgartner of Italy, Constantino Ugi, Alex Virginia, and Lorenzo Bilotti are the crew. Great day for Italy. They won a bronze medal in this morning's skeleton team competition. It's about a 500 to one shot. Gradually improving from 15th, 14th, 13th fastest runs over the three heats. Let's see if he can find more pace. 529 getaway. That's about what they've been doing. And you know, this is the youthful. Oh, push bar out. This is a mistake. This could hit. Well, the brakeman doesn't know because he's got his head buried in the sled. Unless it just didn't come down and he gave up hoping that it's going to hit and come yeah. down. This is dangerous for the spectators. Yeah, now you hear the you hear the, the announcer. Yeah. You hear the announcer say there it's good it hit, it's still not coming down. Now he doesn't know it's out. It yeah. looks like it's in now. Yeah. Eight now it's 1800s lead. That's about what he had on Mel Bartis. Now Bumpgardner, the 2012 Youth Olympic Games champion, he's a good driver. Came from Alpine ski racing. Coming down to 1100s. This could be very 400s, close. 400. I don't know. Speed. I don't think he's going to make it. A little late off 15 into 16 out of 17. Can't touch the wall. 500s back. The Latvians get the chance to still. So the Latvians have moved up two spots there. It's okay. This is best best finish for Patrick Bumgarner in a World Championships yet. And we've seen him at four or five worlds. Last year in Calgary, he was 18th. That's actually, that matches his best result of the year. He was 14th in the four-man in Innsbruck. Which is impressive because they don't get good starts. Yeah. Now. Okay, in so wait, watch number the two, wait. Watch the break move back. He flicks both rear handles with his hands as he drops in. The three guy waited a long time. The two guy did too. Look at the three guy comes down and the handles are still out. Yeah. He expected those handles to be, you know, in for him. In fact, the brake went out. Ooh, that almost hit our camera. And there's another one of our cameras sitting out there watching. And it under that. Under. But that didn't cause the skid. That was just the driver himself. Yeah. 
That cost him his placing. Patrick Bumgarner, if that guy had a start, he'd be much more competitive. Oscar Smelbard is the leader as Maxim Anginov of Russia comes to the line. Fourth and final heat of the four-man bobsleigh world championships in Altenburg in Germany. I'm Martin Hague alongside me, John Morgan, and these guys with a four-tenths of a second lead over Oscar Smelbard is the current leader. First start of the four, 22, they had a 17, 19, and 18. And he started last in the first heat, so he had a disadvantage, Martin. He did great in the second heat. He had the seventh best time of the second run. That's because he went early. And then in the third run, he had the 12th best time, fell behind his teammate. Yeah, it's been up and down, hasn't it? All top 10 starts, but has only produced one top 10 run. Fourth Four. best speed, but he's got a half second in the bank. He's not worried about down below. He's worried about his teammate. He wants to be emerged from this competition as Russia won, and his teammate Stolnev's coming up at two sleds. Yeah, Stolnev's got 1900s in hand over Anjanov. So he had 1500s down to 41, down to 34. Lost time on the bottom. 54-86. Uh, Oscar Smelbardis leaves the leader's box again. Six tenths of a second slower than his run number three. And 600 slower than Melbardis produced. He maintains the spot. Now he's got to wait and let someone else control his destiny. Okay, let's take a look at Melbardis in the front. Look at the helmets. Look at the G-force pressure on the helmets. The athletes shaking around in there. Exit here of Kreisel, and that's not perfect. I was watching uh, a great comparison between a skeleton and bobsled line there. It just looks like Jaws the Great White Shark coming up behind the skeleton athlete and gobbling him up halfway around the Kreisel. Well, next up is Marcus Treichel of Austria. 11th place after the first heat, three hundredths of a second out of the top 10, and he moved up well with the ninth fastest run in our third heat. Parents are here, Saw's met his sister. It's from right outside of Innsbruck, Five. You know, a couple, a mile from the track. 520, second fastest start in the competition for these guys, so they know every hundredth would count. He pressed us in the third heat. Yeah, seventh sure. best time. Nice looking run. 2600s over Maxim Anginov. Another athlete that came from Luz. Good place to learn the ice. Here we go. That's a good run down into the Kreisel. See the gouge marks from the earlier crash. Great exit there as well. Pretty good lines, Martin. 3500s. He's building his lead over Ooh. Anginov, and this could be trouble for Ooh. Alexei Stolnev, who's next up. 43 hundred away. Up. Good What's speed. What's he going to have at the line? This is a good second day for Tricol. Good run. 54-6. All right, his first heat this morning of this afternoon was a 53-9-8, but a 54-6. slower, so the track. Hey, yep. they're happy. This is a good result for him. Well, that's 26 hundreds quicker than Andrianov went just before him, so the track isn't as fast as it was in the first heat, or at least not for these guys. We haven't got all seen the, the sponsors Germans and yet. friends on the side. Catchy Bile at the front there. Race that's his best there. finish in the World Championships. He didn't race last year in Whistler. Yeah. And again, dealing with a broken foot all year. Red badge of courage for this guy. Little mistake here when you see the back end of that sled gets between four and five. Little bit of danger here in 13. Now watch the back right runner here. He climbs real high. Watch the back right runner here in the exit. Airborne. See, that's where you can roll into that curve with a little bit of mishap in that curve 13. Yeah. Just gremlins all over the track, Mark. Oh, yeah. 17 curves, 17 opportunities to get caught out by the Altenburg track. Marcus Trichel leads from Maxim Anginov and Oscar Melbardis as we head into the final 10 sleds of the World Championships. 10th place, Alexei Stulnev of Russia. The fourth and final heat of the Bobsleigh World Championships for four man. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching Russian trying to defend a three hundredths of a second lead over Marcus Trichel of Austria. A race within a race. Ooh, took a lot of that curve one and they skidded out of it. And they started 100 slower than Trichel, so that lead is down to 200. So they've it's got red less numbers. speed, so he's have, in the red. Yeah, that really was a bad exit of one. 
No mistakes allowed up there when the speeds are slow. 700's back, but he's a really good driver. He could find that speed line that we've, we see that's down below the Chrysler. Little late flop off seven. That's pretty good straight there. 700's to six, fifth best start. Not a speed. Not as quick as Marcus Trichel. 500's behind, the gap's now a tenth. Still not as quick tough. as Trichel, gonna and he's tough. Kids. Gonna be tough. I don't think he's gonna finish 14, in the top nine. 10. Boy, these Austrians will be celebrating down there. Now his question is, is he gonna fall by his teammate? I don't think so. Don't think so either. No, no. second best time. The Austrians move up into a, geez, this is a top 10 for him? Yep. And his only and previous four-man world's 16th in Koenigsegg, as you say, didn't go to Whistler, so, yeah, his best, himself. personal best, that's all you look at. And a, and Still a season disappointing. Where, season where Trichel's recovering from a broken foot. I mean, barely recovering now. But he's still the top Russian in the yeah. field. But will any of the Russians finish in the top 10? Yeah. Well, real high in 11. And skidding into 13. Ooh, but he got lucky there and tapped before the take on it, threw him in the middle of the curve. And then the exit of 14. Again, that mistake's made up there on the exit of 12. And it's carrying through all the way to 14. Well, disappointment, I'm afraid, for Alexei Stulnev and the crew as they slip a spot. Next up, Mikhail Vogt of Switzerland. He drove in a two man world championship. So did his brakeman, Seaman Friedley. Joins Vogt like he did last year in the world championships in Whistler on the four man sled, along with Silbieri and Sandro Michel. Great first heat. Suspect second heat, pedestrian third heat. The Swiss are very high in this young athlete who finished fifth last year at the World Championships in Whistler. Well, he really rocked in Whistler, didn't he? He's sort of come back to earth with a little bit of a bump here in Altenburg. But ninth place after three heats. Smooth, very yeah. quiet there. 1100s to play with. Ooh, tap there's not helpful. That isn't either. Sixth place after the first heat. He slipped away since then. 1200s lead. Second best speed's a good sign, though. Yeah. Exit. Not perfect. Steering hard there. Down Ooh. to 10. Watch out here. He's got to be straight here, right? Look at the rudder tips. Not bad. Skid Not bad. Not bad. He's going to be the leader. Single digits. He's going to be the. He's going to be the leader. Mikel Vogt at the line by. Fourteen. Ooh, 14 Pulled away a little bit. Found something at the Pulled bottom. Out. So top nine. Michel right. Vogt. Well, listen. It's not what it was in that super speedway of Whistler, but. Uh, yeah, fifth in Whistler. No worse than ninth place Boy, in the second year, second time driving a four-man in the World Championships. The Swiss like the talent this kid has. Yeah, I think we do too. Start cohesion. Now this is a makeup crew, so it's not perfect, but it's not bad. Look at number of the brakeman. Look at him. He, well, he's reaching for both of those push bars. Didn't get him in exactly what he wanted. Here, a tap on before six. Then he has to steer hard between seven and eight. Little mistakes there, and that was mistakes up in seven and eight here on the exit of nine. He gets penalized down here too. Leaders. Mikkel Vogt in the leaders box with eight sleds to go. At the top of the track is Great Britain's Brad Hall. 18 hundreds of a second ahead of Vogt with Taylor Lawrence, Luke Dawes and Greg Cackett. Sixth best time of the third run. Yeah. It's been a little up and down. The second heat is the one that really dropped them out of top six contention. 13th in the last year's World Championships. He gets to the bottom here. Big improvement for Brad Hall. What a season this, this guy's had it. Two man, he's won his first medal. Decathlete, ooh, big, big change of direction. The articulation split out of curve one, so he get in there late. Starting to rain again. He's also only 800s behind the Olympic silver medalist Yun Jong Won in seventh. So his target to stay ahead of Vogue, but also to try and catch and pass Yun Jong Won. He should have been more than 10 hundreds up at that clock. I think that mistake in curve one cost him 12. He's back on track. 12 hundreds there. Second best speed. That's good. That's good. And Quicker than Vogt's ball. Watch out. Flops off the Chrysler. That's better. It's Keeping the speed out to 1500. That's straight lines there. Ooh. 
trying well, to catch Mick Elvoet or trying to he's stay He's going to do of it. Him. What a great result for Brad Hall. Will he catch Yun Jung Won? 54 wow. 64, just 100 slower than Vogt on that run. The British have got something here. This guy's had yeah. a tremendous season. First ever medal in World Cup at two man. And Martin, remember five years ago, he had that horrific crash in Calgary yeah. and Whistler. His hand, only now you can still look at his hand. He still has some scar tissue issues with it. But, boy, great season. Finished fourth in the two-man in Whistler, 13th in the four-man. He will be no worse than eighth here, and there is a chance of a move up. Yeah, it wasn't perfect on the exit of Chrysler, but... Through and down, Brad. Great season. Got it down, got it done. I think these boys, particularly Greg Kackett there, could do with a couple of weeks off competition just to recover. So what about Yun Jung Won, our Olympic silver medalist from the PyeongChang Games, where he tied to the 100th with Nico Valta. Seventh place after three of our four heats. Seventh place finish, last time out in Whistler as well. But look, that stray 10th place in the second heat had not helped him. 21 in the last heat. Oh, 27. They didn't get in well. Seventh best speed, too. So, oh, look at the weather now. Here we go. Heavy little wet snow. So he was only 700s ahead of Brad Hall as he sat down. What is this going to do for him? Watch these little tiny. Take on and exits right there. He's good. Watch the back end of the sled here. Smooth. Gaps come down to 600s. Brad Hall second quickest onto it's the Kreisel. Seventh best speed. Whoa. Brad Hall was quicker onto the Kreisel. Good line there. And the gap's growing. Back. Perfect there. Okay, now he if he's clean here, he he's could still bring this back. That's nice, but he's losing more time. 800. Oh, this is going to be close. The final corner. You can still find it. Is the he British? Ahead of the line? No. Well, a bit of British winter weather, and this is about as vile as it gets in Britain. A few flakes of snow mingled with the rain, and that has helped turn things around. Yun Jung Won slips another spot. You know the, what I love about amateur sport? Watching those guys celebrate just yeah. now. Start. Well, 600's better or worse than his heat, but everybody's worse up there. There's no, the track's not glistening anymore. It's all frosted up. And Lee Gyeong Min, the man at three, barely got in the sled. He almost went straight over the top. And there he's got to check the runners halfway down, and this is something he learned. Uh, you know, again, this is the Olympic silver medalist, not one of the, the guys he won those silver medals with. They're on his team. Yep. Young Jung, next year, right. buddy. It'll be no worse than eighth for him. Brad Hall, the leader, as we get to Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic, who was sixth after three heats. And he was 3,600s ahead of... Uh, 2,600s ahead of Brad Hall. So, again, a couple of fairly fundamental errors, and that will disappear. Let's see what these guys can produce. They should start almost a tenth quicker than the British crew. 13 in the last heat, probably 18 here. 16, good. It is a, a bit slower. Quicker. It's snowing at the top of the track, and it's yeah. raining down here. Yeah. There's the snow at the top. That snow is probably better off than the rain up there. Well, little bits of snow will help lubricate the runners as they melt it quicker than they'll melt the ice, and that allows you to reduce the friction, but it takes away some of the grip. Archik really looking clean. 3,800s is the lead, down to 3,100s. Oh, speed. here we go. Watch out. Now the British are very hopeful. Dominic Dvorak offline into 11. Had to steer speed. hard. Had to steer hard there. He's got to be clean here. Hits into 13. Hits into 15. He's got enough. Should be enough in the bank unless he really makes a mess of corners 16 and 17. He leads at the line. Fourth best time of the run. The British are done. The Czechs yeah. love it. Last year, they finished 21st in the World Championships in Whistler. Here, it's a top six. Top six. Great for Dominic them. Dvorak of the Czech There's Republic. the trophy, the Martineau Cup. They've been giving that trophy away since 1930. Czech Republic's best recent result, 10th place in Winterberg from Jan Verber. Hey, little steer in there. You could see that hits. And look at this against Brad Hall. 
He didn't quite have the speed coming in here, but he managed to get the exit and build that speed late on. Very similar lines between these two pilots, but Dvorak has much more experience than Brad Hall. It's his fourth World Championships as a driver, Dominic Dvorak, and the best before this, tenth as a brakeman for Jan Verber. Now he's sixth. That is a fantastic result for the Czech Republic. Brad Hall in second, Yun Jong Won in third. Five sleds to go. And buckle up, because this is going to get crazy. Benny Meyer of Austria in fifth place after three or four heats. Half a second ahead of Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic. Trying to tie down his best world championship four-man result. 20, not bad. Ninth in the first run, third in the second run, fourth in the third run. Finished in sixth place last year in Whistler, his best ever, a fifth place in four-man in Innsbruck, his home track. Can he match that here? 25 years old, figured it's his second or third world championship. It's his fifth. New dad, wife Elizabeth, and their baby Hendrix are here. 5,200s up. Nice oh, best speed, though. It's quicker than Dvorak was. Big, fat flakes of snow falling now. Benny Meyer, half a second oh, he's in the lead. here. Look at he these lines, too. Going to match his personal best in four-man world championships. Oh, extending the lead. Here we go. Now, is there a chance he could catch the fourth place sled of Oscar's Keeper Manis? Wow, 54 61. We haven't seen a sled that far. Wolfgang Stopper on the right. Marcus wow. Trikel, his teammate, with a 54 6 0. Wow, now we got snowflakes out in front of our windows yeah. here. So Lots of snow. Again, the trophy first given away in St. Moritz in 1930, named after the Martino. Herbert Martineau was the president of the St. Moritz Bobsled Club and one of the oldest trophies in sport. That's well, what we're ch challenging for here today. Benny Meyer, that was a great final run. Will at least match his best ever world championship result in four-man. Could he go one better? Martin, he's got the worst start of these five sleds. If he had the best start, he'd be right up there with those guys in the hundreds that are going for the gold. These lines were perfect. Well, if for a pleasant change, he comes into next season without a hamstring injury. Yeah. Who knows? Hi, well, there's his wife, Elizabeth, baby Hendrix. His brother competed yesterday in Skeleton. Yeah. His father runs the FIB, RBSF development program. Oscar's Kiba Manis of Latvia, second overnight, dropped out of the medals into fourth with a very loose third heat. He was fastest of all, though, in heat two yesterday. What can the Latvians produce here? A 5.02 start. Wow, fantastic. He needs it. Had a very loose run, Martin. Very surprised that he's gone fifth, first, and fifth. So, all things being equal, he'll have the best time of the run, and he'll put himself in the mix. Yeah. Who can tell? Now this, well, he was 1700s ahead of Benny Meyer from three heats, so he's doubled that. Speed, 39 up, fourth best speed. All right. He's not worried about the sled at the bottom. He's worried about those four yeah. others that are coming up. It's three trying others. to grab a medal here. Best speed, more good line. Kiva Manis, the silver medalist, the last race on this track. Kilber Better Manis, lines. The silver medalist in Whistler. Going away. Got a lead at the line from Benny Meyer. Is it enough for a No, medal? in fact, he fell back a little bit. 54-49, 10 hundreds better. Look, they don't like it. I can tell. Those guys know there that he challenged Benny Meyer's time right there, and he should have been better than that. It's a tenth better than his third heat, but it's nowhere near what the Germans produced in their third heat. So unless they go a lot slower, he's, he's in the leader box. But not for long, maybe. Yeah, he's going to have to. There's the families here, his <laughs> kids. Here's the look at the runner tips. You could see him really steering hard on the exit of nine. And that was a pretty good decision because he motors down there perfectly. Here, gee, as good as it gets. Little No, he's right on the perfect spot going into 13. Oscar's Keeper Manis leads, but for how long? Three to go in the World Championships in Altenburg. Final three sleds in the World Championships for four man in Altenburg. All three are German crews, and all three are covered by one hundredth of a second. 2017 world champion Johannes Lochner is the first to go. Effectively, it's a three-way dead heat now. 
who's going to take gold. Probably 5-10, knowing what the track's been giving up to the other teams. Nine. Snowing really hard there. As we looked up top. Up here, it's covered most of the track. Yeah. It's down on the straightaway, nine to Kreisel's the first time where you'll see some snow accumulation. Well, let's see what his speed is like coming into the Kreisel compared to everybody else. Fastest sled, incredibly, is Mihai Tentea of Romania as they get into corner 10. Out of nine, well, that's what he did in the first heat. 2,700 up, extending the lead. Third best speed's not bad. Yeah. The track was different for the earlier sleds. This is perfect. 3,300s, he's starting to really fly now. Oh, but only 119 kilometers an hour. That's perfect. 4,000s out. He's pulling away from the Latvian. Wow, this is a good heat. Johannes Lockner comes across the line. 4,900s better. Nine. Wow. OK. Well, they know nothing other than uh, nothing else other than utter determination is going to win this. And uh, look at Florian Bauer, Christopher Weber. Not too many mistakes and made Christopher by that Bauer. young Bavarian right there. Whoa, whoa, his, whoa. His uncle won the world championship gold medal in two men on this track in 1991. A come from behind victory. Maybe it's deja vu for the Lochner family. Well, Lochner guarantees himself a medal of some color. He'll have to wait four at, minutes to find out what. Look at the size of these guys and the cohesion. Nobody does it better. Look at the arms coming up perfectly choreographed. And here, look at this line. Oh, there's the that's mother. His mom. Yeah, look at that. Oh my goodness. Well, she's got two more sleds to wait, and so has Johannes wow. Lochner. I can't believe we're watching. Our final two sleds were tied to the hundredth of a second after our first three heats. They are both local heroes here. First up, Nico Walter with Paul Krentz, Joshua Broom, and Eric Franke. They're gonna, this for gold. They're going to give up some time. This is going to be a six 16 or 17 deficit right off the bat. They're 5, 13. 13. Pretty good. They matched their time from the third run. So everybody else is a few hundred slower. These guys match their time. And he's driven the best lines, the best sled down the track because he's had the deficient start time of the three sleds. So Nico Valter, the winner here in 2014 15. He won again 17 18. Martin, he was in second place in the fourth, the two man last week, fell the fourth, fell out of the medals. Oh. Strat. Little drift, 900s back, 117.5. Lochner was 117.6. He needs a superb run at the bottom. more time. 119.4, quicker than Lochner. He's going to close back a little. Lochner speed at the bottom. No, losing more time back. No, Nico. He's going to lose the lead of the race to Johannes Lochner. Where will he finish? 1800s back. Lost 1900s, one more to go, Hansi. Remember, his uncle came from behind to win the World Championship gold and two men on this track. Nico. Well, he is in the medals, guaranteed at least a bronze, Lochner at least a silver, but we will not get a three way tie for gold, which would have been the ultimate fairy tale zenith of these World Championships. Disappointing for Nico for sure. He's from the area. This wasn't perfect. Little drift there. sideways into 11. And he's a little flat there on the crossover, causing this skid into 13. Gets it back in a way that few do, but it costs you time. Nico is second, Johannes leads, and perhaps the greatest bobsleigh driver, well, definitely of the current era, Francesco Friedrich. Behind him, Candy Bauer, Martin Grotkop, and Alexander Schuller. Can he add four-man gold to last week's two-man? 5.02 in the last run. Big advantage, 5.05. Little almost conservative, but a lot of teams have had the two or three hundreds difference. Well, that means he's got five hundreds over Johannes Lochner in the battle so for the gold should be medal. seven or eight hundreds here ahead with that start advantage. If not, he made a mistake out of curve one. Well, he's made mistakes in every Six. run. That's about equal to the start advantage. Now he needs to get it out to nine or ten. Ooh, Ooh, that's late. And again, he comes straight to so only six. Fifth best speed. Say a slower than yes. Yeah, he's the same speed as Valter, but slower Listen than Listen to the crowd. 700s. The gap's coming out. 
Hunt, a fraction fastest sled of all, 119.7. Friedrich could sell it. Andres. It is going to be a tiny margin of victory, but it's going, going to, to do be it. Four man goal for Francesco Again. Friedrich. Five hundreds he wins by. Leo Leopold, ready space. We are seeing the greatest of all time, in my opinion. They held up those goat signs last week when he won his sixth straight two-man. They're going to be doing it again this celebration. Two-man and four-man gold again for Francesco Friedrich of Germany. Do you like amateur sports? If you do, this is the reason why. There's nothing amateur about these guys. All Lochner's crew, all Walter's crew. This is local, just local guy. fantastic. Martin, nobody's dominating the sport like this guy has. And he lost the world championships in 15, four man, finished second to Mel Bardis with a bad fourth run. There's his kids, yeah. Hannes. That's the youngest one, nine, nine months old, Hannes. Well, what a fantastic fortnight of racing. A near 60-year-old record in two-man, taking his sixth consecutive world championship gold. And now he, for the fourth straight year, is the greatest four-man driver on the planet. Three world championships and an Olympic gold medal thrown in there. This time there was no dead heat with Johannes Lochner as there was in 2017. No three-way tie with Nico Walter. Lochner in silver, Nico Walter in bronze, what a but our world champion Francesco Friedrich. Oscar's keeper man is fourth from Benny Meyer in fifth, a personal best equaling run, and Dominic Dvorak a best for the Czech Republic in decades. Brad Hall seventh, a great end to his self-funded season ahead of the Olympic silver medalist Yun Jong Won, Mikhail Vogt, and Marcus Trikel rounding out the top ten ahead of Alexei Stolnev and Maxim Andrianov. Oscar's Mel Bardis returns to top flight racing with 13th, and those are the rest of our finishers with crashes for Mihai. Tentea and Lamin Dean. Martin, what a pleasure it is for us to sit here and call these races. I can't believe they pay us to do it. <laughs> well, if we didn't call it work, they wouldn't pay us, so we still call it work, but it is fun. Well, well this World Championships has just flown by in two weeks, John, but what a delight <laughs> to get the band back together, and the thrilling racing has been just astonishing. History was made. You, you watched Eugenio Monti. You knew him. He was a friend of the family. And to see Friedrich beat that record that, frankly, Last nobody week. thought would ever happen. Yeah, but now he's won four straight, really. 16, 17, 18, yep. 19, or 17, 18, 19, 20 yep. of world championships and the gold medal in the Olympics. And he's won six straight in the two-man. Plus the Olympics, so seven and, straight. And Martin, I had a chance. Yep. He was in my hotel, though, where I was staying a lot this week. What a gentleman. What a sportsman. Yep. And, and above all else, he's just, like the others, such a lovely guy. Yeah. And he so understands time, his time. position in the history of the sport. He's got time for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. What the records mean to him and to everybody else, to the old fans, to the new fans. You know, and racing like this just brings people in and gets them hooked. If you didn't enjoy this race weekend, I don't know what's wrong with you. Martin, I'm signing off. Got to go and catch a plane. Yeah. Pleasure. Well, hey, you're 12 so hours my, behind Justin Cripps as you head back across the Atlantic. So but my, hey, to all my FIB or IBSF TV team, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. We'll look forward to next year's World Championships in February in, in the Adirondack Mountains in Lake Placid. Thank you, John Morgan, thank you. We will see you there. Uh, and we look forward to lots more racing at the World Championships. And again, Lake Placid, another really tough track for the drivers. John Napier and the guys from Lake Placid are here this weekend, seeing exactly how Altenburg have produced a fantastic Worlds, not just in terms of the on-track action, but look at the crowd they have pulled in. And that's something that Lake Placid would love to emulate. 
A huge crowd has seen Francesco Friedrich claim his third straight four-man world championships gold medal ahead of Johannes Lochner and Nico Walter. The top three separated by just one hundredth of a second going into the deciding final run. And Friedrich made a less error-strewn run than previously to grab gold. Crashes for Mihai Tenter and Lamindine in the final heat. But Friedrich, as you sort of suspected the sensible money might have suggested, came out on top of the pile. He is just simply in fantastic form. He's the two-man World Cup champion. He's the four-man World Cup champion. He's the reigning Olympic champion in two and four, and he continues to be the reigning world champion in two and four-man. Greatest of all time, the record books say it's still Andre Langer. He's got a few Olympic medals to catch him, but he has got time on his side. And Langer here coaching over the last couple of weeks certainly knows that Friedrich is every bit one of the world's greatest sliders ever. And the history books, I'm sure, will continue to be re rewritten. And that really brings us to an end to our World Championship coverage for IBSF TV here in this fantastic 2020 BMW IBSF Worlds in Altenburg. We rounded out with an incredibly exciting final weekend of racing. And Francesco Friedrich, Johannes Lochner and Nico Walter made sure we had to wait until the final six minutes to find out who is going to win our gold medal. It was not the cut and dried like the two-man. There is Friedrich with Alexander Schiller. On the right-hand side, you can see Johannes Lochner and his crew, Nico and his boys, all in a huddle there. But they do end up on the podium. And Francesco Friedrich again is our gold medalist. Well, on behalf of John Morgan and myself, I'd like to thank everybody for watching us throughout the season, for watching all the action on IBSF TV and for the World Championships here as well. For all of our crew, all the production crew, all the technical crew, thank you very much for all your hard work throughout the season. And for everybody who has watched, it has been our pleasure to introduce these athletes to you and to hopefully keep you abreast of everything within the sport. To all the athletes who have joined us in the booth this year to talk sense against my incessant waffle, thank you for all your efforts. And to the men and women who have competed and made our weekend so exciting, our warmest thanks and our heartfelt admiration as well. Francesco Friedrich rounds it out in week two, as he did in week one, with victory. Or inconsolable Paul Krentz in Nico Walter's team. They take bronze, Hannes Lochner and his crew the silver, but there are your gold medalists. And that is it. Thank you for the final time and goodbye from Altenburg. From all of us to all of you, we look forward to seeing you next year for much more action as we head into the 2021 World Championships in Lake Placid. And then we will go and discover our brand new Olympic track in Beijing. Until then, from all of us, goodbye for now.